our goal in this section is to be able to solve a linear equation graphically. Also, to be able to differentiate between solving an equation and evaluating an expression. Let's begin by looking at the given graph of y equals x minus 3. See, the line is already here graphed for you on the coordinate plane. Here is our x-axis and our y-axis. It's useful to have those labeled. Part A, what is x when y is negative 1? This is a review of how to read a graph. We've done this before. So when y is negative 1, I'm looking on the y-axis. I'm going down to where I see negative 1. That's right here. And I'm going over to the graph. And here's the point where y is negative 1. What is the x? I look up to the x-axis, and I see the x value is 2. What is x? x is 2. Part B, solve the equation x minus 3 equals negative 1. Notice that we were given the equation y equals x minus 3. So this part right here that says x minus 3, same thing in this equation. What's different? The y was replaced with negative 1. So this is essentially asking the same question as in part A. y is negative 1. The y is replaced with negative 1. This is the y. So using the graph, we go to where the y is negative 1, go over to the line, and it corresponds with the x value of 2. So I could answer this, that it's x equals 2. That's solving the equation. Now perhaps you remember how to solve this equation algebraically instead of using a graph. If I want x to be by itself, I think of here's the equal sign. I have two sides to an equation. I want the minus 3 to move away from the x, so I add 3, that's the opposite of minus 3, to both sides. Then x is by itself. And on this side, I have negative 1 plus 3, and that makes 2. If you remember how to do that, awesome. We're using the graph today to solve the equation. But see how they are the same answer. Let's do another one. What is x when y is 0? What is this called? Let's go to where y is 0, right here and we go over to the x value right here. The point on the graph where y is 0 is where x is 3. See how that's crossing the x-axis or touching the x-axis? What is this called? That's called the x-intercept, also known as the 0. And today, because we are solving an equation, we are also going to call it a solution. Another name for this is a root. It has many names. The x-intercept you've heard before, the zero you've heard before. Today, we're also going to call it a solution and a root. So what is x when y is zero? When y is zero on the line, we see x is three. Part D solve the equation x minus 3 equals 0. So similarly to this one, we took what y is in the position of, and we put the 0 there. We put the 0 where the y was. So we look at the graph when y is 0 over to the line, and we see that x is 3. So solving the equation gives us 3. You can check it the algebraic way as well. Let's do a couple more. Solve the equation x minus 3 equals 2. So again, we're using the graph of y equals x minus 3. Here's x minus 3. In place of the y, what did we put this time? We put 2. In place of the y, we put 2. 
So I'm going to look on the graph. Here's the y-axis. I'm going to look where y is 2, and I'm going to look over to the line. Here's the point on that line. Here's the x-axis, so down to the x-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's where x is 5. So solve the equation, x equals 5. Another thing we can do to check that we are correct, check that this is the answer, is plug in this value of 5. 5 plugged in where the x is, what does that make? 5 minus 3? That does make two. We did it correctly. How about the next one? Solve the equation x minus 3 equals negative 3. So again, it's x minus 3, just like what was given. But now, in place of the y, we have negative 3. So using the graph, I go on the y-axis, negative 3. Here's the point on the line. What's the x that corresponds with that? 0. So x equals 0. Let's check this solution as well. 0 plugged in for x, minus 3. Notice how I put parentheses when I plug it in, equals negative 3. Does 0 minus 3 equal negative 3? Yes, it does. One more. Solve the equation x minus 3 equals negative 4. Again, I'm using x minus 3 from the graph equation. In place of the y, I'm putting negative 4. So I find on the y-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's negative 4. Here is the corresponding point on the graph. And I look for the x-coordinate. That's negative 1. So x equals negative 1. Let's plug it in to check. Negative 1 in for the x. Negative 1 minus 3, that is negative 4. So we did it correctly. Number 2. Given the graph of y equals negative 1 half x plus 3, what is y when x is 4? So now looking on the x-axis, counting 1, 2, 3, 4, I look up to the graph, here's the point, and that corresponds with the value on the y-axis of 1. So what is y? y is 1. Part B, solve the equation y equals negative 1 half times 4 plus 3. Well, what happened this time? Notice the equation we were given looks almost exactly the same, but we replaced x with 4. This is where the x was in the equation. So this is saying the same thing as part a. x is 4, x is 4. So we can go to the graph to find that value of y. What is the y when x is 4? y is 1. We can evaluate this using our order of operations. Let's practice. y equals negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So we did it correctly. Look at how part C is asking something different. Evaluate the expression. How is this different from what we saw up here? Well, up here, we see an equal sign. So equation is when we have an equal sign. And when we see an equation, we will solve it. Here, I don't have an equation. So this one is called an expression. And when I have an expression, I won't solve it. I will evaluate the expression. But it's done similarly to how I did this one up here. I just don't use, use an equal sign. So negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. And then I add 3. And negative 2 plus 3 makes 1. Same answer that I got up here, 
but I'm not saying y equals. I'm just giving the value that I get when I evaluate the expression. Evaluate gives a value. And a value is just a number. See this word right here in evaluate? Value. Value is a number. Let's do some more. Same graph, part D. Find y when x is 0. What is this called? So x, I find where x is 0. Here's the y-axis. And I'm going to go up to the graph. And I see that that's 1, 2, 3. y is 3. What is this called? Well, now this is crossing the y-axis. So this is called the y-intercept. It doesn't have any other names. Let's solve the equation y equals negative 1 half times 0 plus 3. Notice that this time in place of the x, I have 0. That's the value for the x. So if x is 0, I look to my graph where x is 0, go up to the y value, and that says 3. So y is 3. I can also evaluate this part to solve this equation using the order of operations. Multiply first. This part here makes 0. And then 0 plus 3. So I have y equals 0 plus 3. 0 plus 3 makes 3. Same thing I got by looking at the graph. Now, evaluate the expression. I don't have an equal sign anymore, so I don't have an equation. I evaluate this. Do the multiplication first. This is 0, and 0 plus 3 makes 3. I have a value. Not an equation as an answer, but a value. Evaluate just give a value. And remember, a value is a number. Let's look at a few more. Solve the equation y equals negative a half times negative 2 plus 3. Notice where the x was, negative 2 went in its place. So when I go to the graph where the x is, I find negative 2. And I go up to the graph and find the point. And I go over to the y-axis, and that's at 1, 2, 3, 4. So the y should be equal to 4. If we evaluate this side of the equation, let's see what we get. y equals, first I'm going to multiply negative 1 half times negative 2. That makes 1. And then I will do the plus 3 part. And 1 plus 3 makes 4, just like I got from the graph. I can evaluate the expression. So remember, I see evaluate evaluate. I want a value. That means I want a number. Just like I did above, I'm going to multiply first. But this is a different number than up here. This was negative 2. This is positive 2. So negative 1 half times positive 2 is negative 1. And negative 1 plus 3 makes positive 2. If we go to the graph where the x is 2, what do we see? I see the corresponding y value is 2. Well, 2 is the value I got. Looks good from the graph. Last one, evaluate the expression negative 1 half times negative 4 plus 3. If I do this by Order of operations, multiplying these will make 2, and 2 plus 3 will make 5. If I do this by looking at the graph, the x is negative 4. So on the x-axis, I go to negative 4. I go up to the graph, and I see that that's at positive 5. So from the graph, 5 is the correct answer. So let's remember that when we see solve, it's for an equation, and that means to find the missing value of the variable. And our answer will look like 
x equals a number. When I see evaluate an expression, that means I'm going to substitute a value in for a variable and simplify. I'm going to get a value as an answer. So my answer will just be a number. Take a moment to write a short summary in your own words. Try to describe the difference between solving an equation and evaluating an expression. See you in class.